Today I'll be reviewing something that I got about three weeks ago when I decided to trade in my old Canon lens because I was hardly using it at all, the Instago 2. Quick shout out to Wild Camera for giving me a great deal on the trade-in as I even got a brand new Fuji lens too after trading in my old Canon lens. Thanks so much, YL. Anyway, like all my other videos too, this video is not a paid sponsored video as I did pretty much get the Instago 2 with all my own money. In all fairness, I really didn't have the Instago 2 in mind when I first traded in my lens as generally speaking, I am hardly one of those guys who really does enjoy using action cameras as I have always found that I don't have an exciting or adventurous enough lifestyle to justify getting one and I find using them in general is quite cumbersome but because I still had some extra money from the trade-in I decided to get something that could really add more value to my video production on my channel and because lately I have been watching a ton of street photography you YouTubers shit, that just... shoot a lot of POV videos for their lens reviews so I thought that it would be a great idea too to add some POV shots in my reviews too just looking at its size I just thought it was too good of an opportunity to miss out okay so let's first talk about the build quality of the Instago the whole unit itself is constructed out of plastic but it doesn't feel like it was cheaply made, at least not to me. In a nutshell, it is really quite well built and feels solid in the hand. Pretty much nothing about it feels flimsy and I don't have any real complaints about it. In fact, I did accidentally drop the casing once on my toilet floor from about one or two feet and I expected to have some scratches but I was quite surprised that it came out unscathed. So, so far I would say the build quality is pretty good and yeah, no real complaints. I also like how the outer casing also acts like a protection shell whenever you aren't using the camera itself. Okay, so let's go into the specs of the camera. Okay, since there is a ton of specs built into this tiny little beast, I'll first start out with the physical specs and I'll then go into the features and other technical specs too, although I won't be going too much into detail with it. So first of all, here's what you get in the box. In the box, you get the camera, charging case, a magnetic pendant, a pivot stand that slides at the bottom to reveal a sticky surface that you can use to stick the camera to practically any flat surface and it is reusable. All you've got to do is just rinse it off with water after each time you've done with it and also in the box they included a USB type C cable for charging and also offloading your data from the camera itself in terms of size and weight the camera weighs about 26.5 grams and the charging case it comes with weighs around 63.5 grams so in total the whole package weighs under hundred grams and that is amazing because bringing around a camera like this is really a no-brainer because it's so light so that definitely tick my first box of what I wanted in an action camera. In terms of size, well, I guess this Lego model pretty much illustrates just how small this camera is. It is hands down the smallest action camera in the market at the moment. Okay, so now that we've got the size out of the way, here are just some of the specs of the camera itself. The Instago 2 comes with a nine megapixel camera with built-in 32 gigabytes of internal storage, and it is able to shoot videos up to a maximum resolution of 1440p which is about 2560 times 1440. As for the optics, the lens on the Instago has an equivalent focal length of about 11.24 on a 35 millimeter full frame camera and it has a fixed aperture of f2.2. The camera has a maximum shutter speed of 1 8,000th of a second and can be slowed down to 1 30th of a second in video. As for photos, its fastest shutter speed is the same. However, its slowest shutter speed is is around two minutes. It has an ISO range from 100 all the way to 3200. The camera is also able to shoot in manual exposure if you do need to dial in your exposure manually. The camera comes with a clear filter built in that can be unscrewed and you can use any filters or polarizers on this camera too. The Instago 2 comes with a built-in mic however there is no mic inputs if you do want to use external mics. The camera comes with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connectivity and you can always view what you are shooting on your phone once you connect it to the Instago 360 app. Charging the camera is done by placing it inside the charging case which also acts like a remote control and mini tripod too and I find that so useful. Fully charging the camera takes about 30 minutes or so. If you use the camera on its own, the battery lasts about half an hour. However, if you do use the camera with a case, you can record up to 150 minutes, so it's not too bad. The case 
case in itself has two operating buttons and you can toggle through eight different modes. The eight different modes are photo, video, pro video, time shift, time lapse, HDR video, slow motion, and the settings mode. This camera can record in all video modes up to a maximum resolution of 1080p. However, in pro video mode, you can shoot up to a maximum of 1440p at 50 frames a second. As for the slow motion mode, it can record only in 1080p. There is no built-in optical stabilization in the camera. However, there is digital stabilization, and I must say it really is quite amazing. The camera comes with a horizon lock stabilization option when you shoot in pro video mode. So what that means is that whatever the camera's orientation is, the horizon will always be level. And that's really, really cool. Insta360's amazing flow state stabilization can be applied to in post. So it's quite nice to know that you have the option of not having stabilization on. Although I honestly don't know why you'd want that for your action camera footage. However, it's just nice to know that you do have that option anyway. Oh yeah, and did I mention that this camera is also water resistant? Up to 13 feet to be exact. Okay, now let's go into the usability and experience of using the Instago 2. When I first got it, I have to admit that I was definitely kind of overwhelmed and I thought that this camera was perhaps hard to use. But I was pleasantly surprised after using it for a few days, I seriously think that this camera is the easiest action camera that I have ever used, full stop. The two button layout system on the remote is super easy to use and it really is quite straightforward once you get the hang of it. What I did find confusing though at first has to be the camera button operation when you use the camera without the remote because by default you have to remember the different button presses to activate the different shooting modes of the camera and not having any screen it just made it a little confusing what mode you were actually in so there were definitely quite a few awkward videos I ended up shooting because of that but fortunately you can set your own custom button press setting on the app to whatever mode you want it to be depending on how many presses it is so now I just keep two modes on the button press the press Pro video mode when I press the camera button once and the time shift mode when I press the camera button twice. So it's way easier operating this camera now. And I must say I am thoroughly enjoying how easy it is to grab footage on this camera. Way easier than my GoPro. That being said, I do wish the camera button was somehow better placed because I kept on accidentally pressing it at times whenever I took it out of its case. Another thing I love about this camera is the fact that this camera is so inconspicuous so you can really be shooting and enjoying things at the moment because you don't have to be fiddling around with the camera at all. The camera size also means that this camera is quite stealthy and most people don't really realize it's on you or they either think it's just a toy. As for the accessories, I think Insta360 really nailed a home run with it. Straight out of the box, you literally get all the accessories you possibly could need to shoot like 99% of the action. I love the magnetic pendant, pivot stand and also the cap mount the most. I find it so easy to use them whenever I need to get some action recorded. The pivot stand really is amazing because it sticks so well onto any flat surface and the fact that you can reuse it over and over again is just crazy in my opinion. My only gripe about this camera has to be two main things. Well, maybe three. I don't like how the built-in tripod is very hard to balance on certain surfaces and I think it's just due to the shape of its feet being too rounded off. Another thing I also wish this camera had was extra storage space because I think 32 gigs is just not really enough sometimes. It would be really cool though if they could actually add an accessory or casing that could actually dump the footage whenever you charge the um, Instago 2. I mean, that's just an idea to throw about. Also, I wish that the battery life could be slightly longer than 30 minutes at a time when you use the camera on its own. Oh, also, I wish that they did make the charging case water resistant too, because it does get quite difficult to actually have to leave the charging case somewhere that's dry and safe whenever you want to snap action shots. So imagine if you're on a beach or something like that, that means you've got to leave the casing on the shore and hope that nobody steals it. Hmm, what else do I like about this camera? Well, I love the fact that when I shoot in pro video mode, I can always decide to reframe the footage to a 9 by 16 or square aspect ratio after it has been shot. I think that really is quite useful as I can always optimize the footage for all my social media posts. I also did try placing this camera on my FPV drone and so far I have been very pleased with the 
results. The stabilization is just phenomenal. I like the fact that this camera in pro video mode has this horizon lock option. In terms of editing the footage, I have only one main complaint and that is I wish that Insta360 made the desktop app just a little bit more powerful like the phone app because in the phone app, I am able to even keyframe stuff and I find that somehow I can't really do that on the desktop app, you know, so I don't really know why that is the case. Do let me know in the comments down below if I am missing out on something or whether I'm not doing something right here because somehow I can't figure it out and I can't even keyframe rotation on the footage on my desktop app. So what do I think about the image quality? Well, to be absolutely fair, I am quite impressed with what this camera is capable of, especially considering its size. In my opinion, I think that this camera really makes for a good B cam when you might want more specialized angles or something like that. Of course, the image is never going to be amazingly great if you put it side by side with a bigger sensor camera. But if you use it well, you'll be surprised with just what you can achieve with this little camera. Okay, so what's my conclusion after using the Instagram? go to now for a few weeks. Who do I think really should get this camera? Well, to me, it really boils down to what you plan to shoot. If you know you are someone that hates to fuss around with bulky action camera gear and you just want something that just works and that can shoot key moments throughout your adventurous day, this camera is seriously a game changer and a no brainer in my opinion. It's by far my most favorite camera I bring along every single day now because of how light and easy it is to use. Use well and use with knowing its limitations, this camera is simply in my opinion a camera companion that every single camera head should have in his bag or pocket. That's all I have to say, it's just that good. I seriously can't wait to see what Insta360 will do to improve on this version when Instago 3 comes out, can't wait. By the way, if you did enjoy the content here, please don't forget to give me a like, share and subscribe as it does keep me running this channel with more content like this. Also, all the links to the gears that I use to make these videos are down in the description below, so please do check them out. And I've also left a link to buy me a coffee if you'd like to do so. Right then, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.